I asked myself, what the hell's that? It's, that's clearly the heater matrix. The evaporator coil would be in the stack there. And then there's this rig here. 12 volts, 435 watts. What's that? Well, some of you will know fine well what it is, guys, right? Of course, it's the, uh, the PTC heater, uh, supplemental electric heat that is in the, uh, uh, the HVAC plenum of my little Prius C. I think these are quite commonplace in some cars these days. I assume um, under certain conditions in cold climates that the, the uh, cabin heat uh, output must be marginal again under certain conditions otherwise it wouldn't be there yeah so I was interested to see so how do you know this is working under what conditions is this working right I don't know if it's common knowledge that it is there maybe amongst Prius owners who actually read their handbooks even though I don't know if the detail is in there so there's just a schematic of the plenum there guys you can see the blower motor of course and uh, the evaporator the heater, uh, and of course highlighted there, I've kept the color coding consistent, is the actual uh, PTC heater assembly. So I should mention, what is a PTC? That's positive temperature coefficient uh, heater. Uh, so basically it's a resistive block, and uh, the electrical characteristics are the hotter it gets, the higher the resistance. So it's kind of self-limiting with respect to the current it's going to draw, yeah? Um, so the current it's going to draw is going to be a function of the uh, the airflow that's over it. So there's some preconditions for when this is actually going to operate. And let me just uh, show you those in the manual briefly. Because uh, there's a better picture of it on its own. You can see there's the connector that we were just looking at. We can only see the end of it. You can see the wiring coming out of it. And uh, so, yeah, here's the conditions that this will actually operate under. It won't operate under all conditions. So... This is mostly for, well, Prius owners, obviously, guys. I'd imagine all the models probably have it, although this is the C. Um, I shouldn't make that blanket statement. I don't know for a fact. Um, but cold weather climate um, markets will, in all likelihood, have this. And I'll show you how you can tell if you have it or not. Uh, here's the conditions for, uh, for this to actually function. So we have to have the ready light on, i.e. the car is powered up and everything is ready to go, essentially, right? It's, it will not run itself off the uh, auxiliary battery. Um, the eco mode is off, which I always operate with it on because I'm a cheap bastard. So I'll have to uh, make sure I turn that off. The blower motor is not in the off position. Temp is at the max hot position. So typically when I run the heater in my car, uh, I usually let the climate control moderate the temperature i usually set it for like 22 degrees and let let the automatic controls operate it it will not operate under those conditions as you can see you have to have max hot selected engine temperature uh, is below um, 50 degrees c obviously if the engine coolant is up to temperature in all likelihood the the standard heater matrix probably provides adequate heating ambient temperature is lower than 10 degrees which makes sense from a logic standpoint and you're not overloading the uh, the inverter converter because it is quite a bit current. Um, just I won't kill you with the details on the schematic here, guys. I know, know a lot of people are too too interested in these. So there is essentially uh, one assembly, but uh, three separate elements. Interestingly, uh, PTC two schematically there leads you to believe it's twice the wattage. Two separate elements as or two combined elements as opposed to just a single, for whatever reason. I'm sure there's a logic to it. Three uh, relays actually control the uh, power that's being applied to it. Again, under the, uh, the conditions, um, three separate uh, fuses. Um, they're the block style fuse. And the whole thing is actually monitored via the air conditioning amplifier assembly. Not to be confused with the control panel itself. Um, yeah, the air conditioning amplifier assembly is the one that actually applies the logic to the relays in order to apply the power. I, I'm not going to go through the circuit because I know it will likely, in all likelihood, bore the hell out of most people. So what I want to do is uh, see if I can get it to function, see if there's an easy way to check it. And as we've seen on the uh, on the car itself, we can access this wiring. Um, perhaps I'll put a current clamp around it and we'll see if we can actually monitor the... Uh, 
the current although I suppose we could work the math backwards so we know it's 435 watts maximum at 12 volts I suppose we could work that backwards so let's see what we can see just so I have some idea what kind of current we're going to be looking at that's assuming that um, PTC2 is twice the wattage we don't know that for a fact but make that assumption so we have some idea what we're looking at easy way to tell whether you have the auxiliary heater if your vehicle is equipped with it or not um, I guess cold weather climate is all relative that would there might be some markets that kind of are somewhere in between geographically in the world I suppose here's the three relays and uh, here's the 330 uh, amp fuses interestingly they're all fused the same although it looks like the one heater is twice the water clamp actually clamped around the two wires that are going to ground so we'll get the uh, the total current draw not the individual elements of course but we'll get the total current draw from the uh, assembly that's the next day guys I had to wait uh, for the ambient temperature to drop so I could function this so uh, I've got my scope set up here sorry I've got the scope set up here uh, that's monitoring the current draw on the uh, uh, auxiliary heater uh, right now the eco switch is on Hope you can see that on the dash let me just turn it off and I think we'll have an increase in the current draw from the uh, heater so there is the current draw um, every graticule is uh, basically half an amp there guys so that's uh, sorry five amps every uh, every graticule is five amps so there is a peak of about um, 15 amps and you can see it ramp down there as the heater actually heats up that looks to me like a second uh, relay has kicked in a uh, up the uh, the uh, heat capacity the heat output from the auxiliary heater and there is the third stage that actually just kicked in the engine just turned off <clears throat> of course we're in the stop mode here I'm just in my garage so the engine only ran for a short time as I powered the vehicle up so there is that looks to me quite clearly you can see the three stages of the relays and um, yeah we're so we're what one to uh, three that looks to me about 17 amps of current yeah so four blocks would be equal to 20 amps of current guys um, I've got my clamp on amp meter set down there for every hundred millivolts is uh, is uh, one amp so of course um, one volt would be 10 amps so yeah that looks to be about as i said that looks to be about uh 17 amps or so let me just turn the eco switch back on there's the eco switch back on oh sorry <laughs> wrong button that was the ev mode there's the eco switch <clears throat> yeah so the manual is a little bit misleading in the sense that, it, well, at least my interpretation of it was when the eco switch is turned on, it will disable the auxiliary heater. That's clearly not the case. As you can see there, um, it did derate the heater. You can see there's a drop in the current draw there, and it looks like another stage just dropped out. I suspect it's much more complicated than simply off or on. Um, I think it probably monitors the state of charge in the high voltage battery as well and we'll uh, stage the uh, heater accordingly in order to manage the uh, the load on the battery so there you can see we're down to uh, it's not drawing any current now let me let me turn the eco mode switch back off and it stepped up there um, yeah I suspect that's the case because uh, when the high voltage battery uh, state of charge gets down to if memory serves 40 percent um, 40% I don't recall the actual figures but uh, you could hear the engine kick back in there in order to replenish the charge in the high voltage battery this current of course is being supplied from the high voltage battery ultimately here guys through the inverter converter um, and then uh, it's 12 volts through the converter actually being applied to the circuit uh, through the relays here so again there's the three stages of the relays quite clearly load managing uh, the current that's being uh, uh, supplied to the to the heater assembly so it looks like all three segments are working um, I don't have any uh, that's not 400 that let's do the math that is not anywhere near um, 
that is not anywhere near uh, 435 watts if you do the math um, that's no 435 watts but don't forget we're at eight degrees ambient uh, temperature here if it was minus 30 <laughs> minus 40 uh, I think the heater assembly would be so cold that the the current draw would be massive compared to what we're currently drawing. I hope that makes some sense, guys. Um, yeah, so it also seems to work uh, out of the max heat position as well. You can see I'm actually just stepping down the, uh, the temperature here. Let's see what effect that actually has on the current draw. I'm at 27 degrees now. That's a step in a relay. I suspect one of the relays just dropped out there. Yeah, and then I just, it is not as simple as it needs to be in the max position. It looks at the temperature that you're calling for on the panel and uh, and we'll either apply heat to that um, or not, depending on the degree that, of heat that you're actually calling for. So we've got a discrepancy in the manual and, and reality. But um, yeah, somewhat interesting there, guys. I guess I'll leave it at that. I think I made the point. Um, okay, and interesting. There's the second stage of the heat. Let's see if we can see the third stage clearly again. They seem to be, what's my time base there? Um, five seconds. I've got it on a really slow time base so we can see kind of a hist histogram there guys so it looks to be about every 15 seconds a, a stage of the heat will actually kick in again uh, I suspect that's for load management purposes but yeah just observations not definitive um, if anybody knows differently by all means uh, sing it in the comments there guys so that's good we'll call that uh, good enough guys uh, 8 degrees outside temperature I couldn't carry on last night because the temperature uh, never went below the, the threshold. So, yeah, that's it. I'll leave it at that. Appearance by the Hentech scope for uh, uh, the first time in a long while. It's got a few wee glitches that are extremely annoying, so I don't use it a great deal, but it, it sure is handy to have it portable. That's it, boys. Cheers.